So here's an update on this bicycle. I've had it for about one and a half to two months now. And I must say, I'm quite impressed by the way it rides. Um, the suspension is really good, as you could uh, expect from a uh, early in downhill suspension. It's also made for downhill and the whole geometry of the bike is, is, ge is definitely downhill. Huh? question is do you need a downhill fork like this one or downhill suspension like this uh, if you're really going out to jump and drop this is really really good because it takes so much pressure off the body but does one need it a uh, trail bike with trail suspension with 160 mil normally is sufficient the Turning cycle is uh, is what it is. Tight turns, lower the saddle, switch down some gears, and then it's all about leaning the bicycle, steering all the way to the point where it's blocked, and then leaning the bicycle as far as possible into the turn, and my butt goes outside the turn. Then speaking of the weight, also compared to a 100 kilo plus uh, motorcycle, this is still quite light, so I have noticed in a bike park that the weight is an issue if you're doing jumps um, because you can feel the weight of course. And especially in a bike park it's not always to get the speed like you can get on a motorbike. And that's where we come to the motor. This is restricted to 25 kilometers per hour. When I'm trying to race uh, for a kicker to get build up speed, I don't get any support anymore after 25 kilometers compared to a normal pedal bike. If you're getting a bike with this kind of suspension, you should, um, you should be interested in, in working on the suspension because for different rides, I also put on different settings and I'm never a hundred percent sure if I got the right setting. So um, it's definitely something you wanna uh, be committed to playing with. One thing I definitely like a lot is that these cables from the, for the electronics are really solid. Huh? I mean, on, on the Norco, these are really, really a pain in, in the butt. I, uh, had a lot of problems with these and here this is really solid no problem but um, if you look at this uh, they call it I think an interface it's simple uh, to use I had no issues at the moment but what I can say is uh, I tried to connect it to my iPhone 13 and with various apps tried everything and I couldn't get it to connect so i don't really know how many kilometers the bicycle has i brought it to the first service it was about 300 so, so now we're in about 500 kilometers but the connectivity the the dealer he was able to connect it with his android telephone with the iphone please correct me if someone finds out how to connect it with the iphone i did not manage to to do it then battery and charging. So this charging port is in a strange uh, place. I can imagine that if you can get a range extender that goes in here and you can plug it directly in here, that would be amazing. This way, I don't know why, but I haven't lost this yet, but this is really prone to be lost. Huh? There's no official range extender yet from high bike. I think there are third parties that will provide but there's nothing I haven't found anything clear if someone finds out how and where I can get a range extender I might go and buy one although the range is not that bad because this bike has a assist mode that's called automatic mode if you press the, the top button here for long then it's an automatic that means you're uh, saving battery and it feels very natural and uh, I, I pedal more this way but still I don't feel like I'm pedaling more so it's quite good I will also compare the, the 
the battery range to the Norco site in the following video uh, with 900 watt hour batteries compared to these 720. What I can say is that the range is around about, because it's uh, very mountainous where I live, the range is around about 1,700 vertical meters and about 35 kilometers roughly. Huh? Of course, the less vertical you do, the more kilometers you will get. Huh? Then the next thing that I was curious about is this one here. It's still there, it's still alive, and I'll take it off to see how much dirt this collects. See if this... Okay, so I haven't uh, seen, looked inside here for a while, but it's actually it's quite clean. Huh? It's not that bad that uh, you need an actual key to take out the battery. And for me, it's at the moment a disadvantage because I'm not so afraid that someone's going to steal it, but uh, I'm more afraid of not bringing the key with me so I can take it out. I did go on a long ride once and then I just to took a charger with me and I found a restaurant that uh, I could charge it at. So that's uh, an alternative, especially because this charger is quite small and quite handy. It's not super heavy, so at the moment I'm still happy with the range of this battery. I've been on Shimano brakes all my life, and this is my first Magura setup. And I must say, I really like the feel of these to be really nice to those. They have a little bit of a, a different feel to them, a little more rough it feels, but I, I really like them. Huh? I really like this finish. What I definitely prefer to the Shimano is this SRAM leader technology. These are really good. Huh? These have such a nice way to change gears one big surprise for me were these Schwalbe tires. They are really good. I have been riding Maxis for many years and I must say these Schwalbe tires really impressed me. The climbing on these is really amazing and also the grip on the downhill really good. Huh? Um, I think this one is quite soft, so I think this one is going to wear off a little quicker than the Maxis that I have on the other bike. But yeah, I don't really care. I'll, I'm happy to buy a new one because this is really good. I'll definitely stick with the Shoalbi here. This motor is very similar to the Bosch motor. While pedaling, there is not a lot of noise it's very quiet and then when you stop pedaling or only pedal really light it gets louder there's a little rattling in it but that's so minor this is really a quiet motor to me uh, it's the most natural feeling motor i think it's not as strong as the bosch and the shimano is much stronger than than the Yamaha, I feel it, it. There's a little more punch to it, but the Shimano motor does not feel as natural as this one here to me personally. Uh, one thing you might have to get used to is that that this, when you give it just a light pressure, when you're standing somewhere and you give it a light pressure on the pedal, then the motor wants to wants to start riding. It starts to work and it is it's quite nervous. But the upside of this is when you have to restart somewhere in a very steep hill, then it has direct force and the force is really smooth. So it doesn't just lift up the, the front end. It's for me, in my books, this is more refined than the Shimano EP8 and maybe it's very similar to the Bosch. So if you like this video, like and subscribe that you don't miss out on my next video which is going to be definitely about the range range tests and i'm definitely going to make a comparison to the 
Norco Site VLT with 900 watt hour battery. Right safe. 